Hey guys, so today I want to talk about the collapse of the Western Roman Empire and the impact they would have on Western Europe for the next couple centuries. The biggest thing we need to take from the collapse is that although not a massive catastrophe as it's sometimes played off to be, it did have a significant socioeconomic impact and political impact on the people living in these regions. From these various Germanic kingdoms that came and formed after the collapse of the empire, much of our cultural and and much of our identity are shaped in form from this period of time. One of the biggest things to take into consideration, though, is the fact that although the Western Roman Empire collapsed, there were significant reasons why it did. And those reasons would remain persistent and a constant problem for the successors of the emperor. For the Franks, the Ostrogoths, and the Anglo-Saxons, the same socioeconomic problems that existed in the Western Empire also would exist in these kingdoms. A lack of a sophisticated and educated intelligentsia capable of acting as engineers and bureaucrats for these institutions meant that the various regimes that existed in Europe at, this, at the time were not nearly as sophisticated. Legalism and concepts of civic order and civic customs were all but extinguished. Only the most base and most earthy elements of what used to exist in the Roman institutions were able to survive. Why? Why was Europe in this situation? Why was it facing a crisis like this? Well, one of the things we need to take into consideration is the economic reality that Western Europe was in. After the division of the Roman Empire to the Western Roman Empire, known as the Riviana Empire, and the Eastern Roman Empire, known as the Byzantine Empire. This led to a socio-economic revolution in the East, but a economic recession and depression in the West. Why? Well, for centuries, the Eastern Roman Empire had always been the commercial as well as ag agricultural hub of the empire. The province of Egypt produced somewhere around 60 to 70 percent of the grain stuffs that would be used to feed the empire. Also, the urban centers that were centered around ancient cities of Greco-Roman and Eastern origins were now under the hands of a separate regime, collecting taxes from them. This would have a huge impact on the economic life of the Western Roman Empire. For people in these regions now had to basically turn towards agriculture more than ever before in the existence of the empire. More importantly, most land was no longer owned by individuals, small citizen farmers, but instead were owned by aristocrats with massive holdings of massive tracts of arable land. And more importantly, this arable land, or land that you could grow foodstuffs on, was being used not to produce foodstuffs, but instead commercial items, luxury items that they could use to basically transfer some money into their own pockets from the wealthy eastern um, commercial hubs. What's important to understand is that that would have a huge impact. Western, the Western Empire now was expected to transition its economic existence towards its own subsistence. This didn't happen before. The division basically left a huge burden on the Western Roman administration that it was unable to overcome. More importantly, this had a huge impact on the psyche of the people living in these regions. Instead of a sophisticated central government, it was divided into small spheres of socioeconomic um, controls. Various governors who owned a certain amount of land and were able to ascertain a certain amount of wealth were able to dictate the laws and the policies of various regions that they were in. This would be the case for most of Western Europe during the long existence of these kingdoms. And this, once again, is the result of the economic recession and depression that existed in, in the West. In some, in some instances, there was really no existence of any kind of economy that we'd be able to recognize. Bartering, in the most basic sense, was the dominant custom of trade within the society. Now, this is not the result of backward barbarianness. Most of the barbarian tribes that conquered the Western Roman Empire were themselves Romanized to some level and to some extent. It was more to do with the fact that they didn't have the resources available to them to sustain these civic institutions. 
To have civic institutions, you need to have educated people, jurists that would be able to implement law, that would be able to learn the law and the customs of law, to learn the customs of the court. In order to sustain the infrastructure, you need to have engineers and other scientists that would be capable of sustaining the massive aqueducts and buildings. These Germanic kings did not have that kind of wealth. To add on top of the fact that most of these individuals probably had already fled to the Eastern Empire before these Germanic kings even conquered the West has a huge impact on the development of the institutions and society in the West. To make matters even worse, there just wasn't that much wealth in the West in comparison to the East. The Western Empire, yes, had a lot of arable land, but once again, it was either underdeveloped, unable to obtain, or was not... Um, valuable in the eyes of the aristocracy. But there's also another reason why the Western Roman Empire had a huge problem. It was underpopulated. This is the result of various plagues, brain drain, the brain drain that I already discussed, but also due to the simple fact that the West was just not seen as, as valuable as in the East. So the Western Empire has these various problems. So why did it change? Or when did it change, I think would be a better question. Well, the change happened around the time of the First Crusade, for various reasons. But the first and most poignant one, when the Western Crusaders ended up conquering and formed the Crusader States in, in basically what would be the former province of Judea, it opened up the West to a vast, a vast network of commercial and economic hubs Wealth was slowly being transitioned from the east to the west in a way that it hadn't before. Before, it was either under the monopoly control of the Byzantine Empire or only access through the Italian city-states. And this is very sparse and very controlled. Where now, these economic hubs were open and bare to all European merchants from the east that wanted to have access to these commercial hubs and to the resources that were now available to them. Um, two major resources that are now made available to the Western Europeans was science, technology, and luxury resources that could be reproduced. The reintroduction of fancy textiles and the reintroduction of wealth in the West led to the rise of institutions that we call guilds. Now, guilds are really important and are a major economic boon to the society where they're at. But they're also very frustrating. A way to describe a guild is imagine a union, but a union that is simply a made up of professionals. These professionals basically all work with one another and train one another. In fact, many of the unions that you see in the United States are basically holdovers of old guilds. Think of plumbers, electricians. These are people that basically have skills that other people don't have. And simply put, they train apprentices for the specific job of, of, uh, of plumbing and of electrician and other sorts of social issue, uh, social uh, um, economic issues. What's really important to understand though is that these guilds are now providing something that the institutions of state couldn't basically produce on their own. And that's learned people, engineers, educated individuals, jurists, if you will, lawyers. More importantly, the Crusades saw the rise of a new middle class. Now, this middle class was not necessarily just the result of the Crusades, but it was something that was definitely a, 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 a um, exacerbated outcome of the economic influx of luxury goods and wealth and coinage that is now making its way into, the Western, into Western Europe. More importantly, the Western European nobility that went on the Crusades basically got to learn quite a bit about how the Eastern world governed itself and the various laws and systems that were in place. A rise of secular legalism also began to take place. And what we call the 12th century renaissance also happened. In this period of time, technology, art, and culture all exploded. New forms of production of steel led the way to people being able to clear out what was considered once forest land into perfectly capable arable land. Another important byproduct of the Crusades and this economic growth and this technological growth is the decline of serfdom or at least the basic tenets of serfdom were beginning to change. In many places, serfdom was becoming abolished. In, in England, for example, the old feudalist 
old system of feudalism was beginning to be annulled, and a new form of feudalism, what we call um, the routine, or what I would call, what many people call bastard feudalism, was beginning to form, where the new middle class and other people who are not nobles were beginning to become in very important and prominent roles within society. This is very strange and odd in comparison to the time that was before it, but in comparison to before, this was a more sophisticated and educated society. And once again, this was largely due to the result of the Crusades. All one has to do is think about the Templars, the Masons, everything that came from the Crusades. All sorts of new professions began to have an influx in Europe. New kinds of castles were being constructed. Cathedrals were being constructed now. The cathedrals that we all know. Down on top of that, bridges were being constructed. Bridges made of stone. A new sophisticated local economic systems were beginning to develop. What we call national economies were beginning to cultivate as well. This meant that society had to, the, the the institutions that existed in Europe had to respond to these things. But these responses are the direct result of the fact that the old burdens that were basically holdovers from the Western Roman Empire were now gone. So as a recap, one of the biggest problems that the Western Europeans had at the end of the West Roman Empire was the fact that it was underpopulated, unable to produce enough food to sustain the kind of growth necessary to create a more sophisticated society, and lacked the resources and the, un and the technology to basically further expand the sophistication institutions of society. Once again, thanks for watching.